Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Jenkins Lectures. Today's lecture is about calculating the daily required fluid for a patient. So we do calculate the daily required fluid for a patient in the inpatient setting. When patient is not able to take anything orally or when the GI absorption is not really doing a good job. So the nutrition is not supplemented to the patient. And this is where the parental nutrition through the intravenous route comes into play. So we do this calculation through this formula. The formula is basically 1,500 milliliter plus 20 milliliter times weight in kilogram minus 20. There are a few things that I want you to be aware of when using this formula. Number one thing, this formula is only used for those who are with a body weight of over 20 kilograms. So this is only for those who have body weight of over 20 kilograms. One more thing to keep in mind is that this is the total body weight. It's not the ideal body weight and it's not the adjusted body weight. It's only the total body weight, which is the weight when the patient comes in and you take it on the scale. This is the weight we're using. So number two, it's total body weight is the only one used. The third thing that I want you to be aware of when using this formula, basically, this is in kilogram. So always keep in mind when having in a question or in any other setting, you're having a patient in pounds, there needs to be a conversion to kilogram in order to apply this formula. And the conversion is basically for every one kilogram, there are 2.2 pounds. So keep this in mind to have the right amount of fluid given to the patient. The number four is basically this formula sometimes for some institution, they have a different way of calculating this total volume for a patient and that through estimation of 30 to 40 milliliter per kilogram per day. So sometimes you may see this formula not being used and instead you'll see 30 to 40 milliliter per kilogram per day. This, this is also could be used in some institutions. However, I haven't seen it so far. What I have seen is this one in the places that I have worked at or done my rotations at. The number fifth things that I want you to keep in mind is when you calculate the total daily volume for a patient, you should include and consider all the medication patient is receiving. Let's take an example. If we're having a patient that is taking a azithromycin and it comes in an IV piggy pack, 500 milligram azithromycin. So patient is receiving 150 milliliter of azithro. An IV route. So you should consider this amount over here 150 in your calculation. So let's say you calculate the whole volume and it comes out to be 1000 milliliter. You should not give the patient 1000 milliliter because they're already receiving 150 from their medication over here. So you should subtract 1000, 150 from 1000. So in this case, in this patient, we will end up having total daily fluid of 850 milliliter instead of 1,000. Keep this in mind when you are dispensing or calculating these volumes, especially in those who have such condition like heart failure or renal dysfunction, because the volume could actually be less than what is normally given for other patients. 
So keep this in mind. It's very important to do the calculation correctly. So let's take into this example to have a better idea how to apply this formula. Question number one says, AA is 61 years old male who is admitted to the hospital for back pain. Patient will be NPO, very important. Whenever you see NPO, this means patient can't take anything orally. So they're being basically given a parenteral nutrition over here instead. Patient weighs 70 kilograms, so this is the total body weight, and it's in kilograms, so we're good. What is the daily fluid requirements? So let's apply the formula. So we know it's 1,500 milliliter plus 20 milliliter times 70 minus 20. 70 minus 20, that's 50. So from here, it's 50. 20, don't forget there is a multiplication over here. Don't add these two and then multiply. Multiply before the addition. It's very, very important. So 20 times 50, that's 1,000, plus 1,000 and a half. So this is 1,000 plus 1,000 and a half plus 1,000 equal 2,000 and a half milliliter daily requirement for this patient. So that's question number one. Question number two. A 70 years old patient is having back uh, problems with GI absorption. Here we go. We have a patient that cannot absorb the nutrition through their GI. So, and now they are MPO. So they cannot absorb and now they are MPO actually. So patient has no heart problem. Also, this is actually a good thing to keep in mind if they're having a heart problem like heart failure, maybe there is a consideration for a reduction in the volume as well. So this is a good thing to look after. Whether it's in the question or if you're looking at the chart for a patient, you should consider all these facts. And weighs 160 pounds. So we do need to do a conversion to convert this to kilogram. And we know the conversion is basically one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. What is the required daily fluid? So first of all, let's convert. So we have 160 pounds times one kilogram over 2.2 pounds in order to cancel the pound with pounds. So we cancel this with this. And if you were to multiply 160 or actually divide 160 over 2.2, you should end up with 72.7 kilogram which is approximately 73 kilogram. Now, we have the kilograms. Let's apply the formula. So the formula says 1,500 milliliter plus 20 milliliter times, remember it's times, total body weight, which is 73 minus 20. 73 minus 20, that's 53. So 53, so here, this is 53, times 20 is basically 1,060, and here we have 1,000 and a half. So the answer for this patient, it's going to be 2,000, let's put it over here, 2,560 milliliter. And that's the required for this patient as a fluid on daily basis. So this is it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.